Before we get into it, the Jasmine Sullivan Deluxe though. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. Since Love Day is a few days away and it's Saturday, I figured it's Saturday story time. Let's talk about all the times I got in the mix in the mess of it all during Valentine's Day. Hey, just letting you know off rip, these are not my own personal stories because personally I don't really celebrate it. I think I've had one and a half Valentine's Day. Most times I'm working or a man's working or we're both working so I don't celebrate. And I think the one time we we're both off, we're like, okay, not really worth the hype, but that's just me. So if you like it, I love it. I hope that you guys have an amazing Valentine's Day weekend and let's get into it. This is gonna be like a story time work part two video since most of these stories happen while at work. Whether you're in retail or restaurants, you got tales on tales, you already know. So this first story is when I worked at a lingerie store and as anyone who's ever worked at a lingerie store, as I like to call it, during this time of year, you know it's like Christmas, but for lingeries. Every time this holiday rolls around, and I think I work two or three Valentines, pandemonium, okay? Between the guys that have it together and they get their assistants to get their stuff ahead of time, or the men who are frantically trying to get it together last minute, February 14th. The one story I will share with you guys that I think is absolutely insane is this lady came back to return something. It was like a few days after Valentine's Day. We scan it, the tags don't be matching. She says, this is all the comfort I need to know. I swear, if this was a movie scenario, she'd be like, I'm getting the house, I'm getting the alimony, I'm getting the car, I'm getting the, like just the energy she had when she said that. I said, this woman knew and this was the last straw. Irony was the cash lead whose number was on the receipt was the one who was of course the most confident about how good she was doing her job. So why'd you mix the receipts up? Because I worked a lot of shifts where the men would tell me, don't swap the switch. This one for the side chick, this one for the main. And I'm here thinking, scanning, boop, boop, boop. Why are you so confident and comfortable telling me? You know this city is big, but there's still six degrees of separation. For all you know though, or maybe they do know, but it was just weird to me because it'd always be the same thing. I'm telling you guys, the week leading up to Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day, tons of men would come into the store. I would say it was 50-50, which is why it's so shocking. So some guys would come and just buy one thing. Okay, you got one girl or maybe you're coming in tomorrow to buy for the next girl. But a lot of guys, the other half, would come and buy for both chicks at the same time. They would ask for two boxes, two gift receipts, and it was always, oh, the sexy, slinky ish for the side and the mommy looking issues for the main. And I just felt like secondhand disrespect though, cause the energy you're giving to the side, shouldn't you give to the one that you're married to? I don't know, I'm not judging, I just wanna know. Like if I could put on my glasses and do a research study on this, I would, cause I find it so interesting. I just, <sighs> every single time, it was always the sexiest thing they could find for whoever they had on the side. And then for their wife or their girlfriend, it was the pajama flea set. The disrespect. <laughs> the disrespect. You know what else is disrespectful? Side chick day. And we're gonna talk about that more when I get to the restaurant side of things, but sticking with retail. Side chick day is synonymous with return the issue just used last night today. And these women had no shame because it smelled like, let's keep it PG because this is YouTube, but also, when you have remnants and remains, need I say no more? Why are you fixing yourself to fight with me in the store? And because the company I worked for was the customer is always right, I just learned these were battles I wasn't willing to fight. So we'd accept it, the manager would cut it, and I'm just like, the mess of it all, the disgust of it all, the unhygienic of it all. I would literally take a tissue, pick up the panty with remnants on it and then put it in the damages bin thinking like why we're giving the money back for something they clearly used everything was just gross to me about that situation let's talk about zara because you guys know i worked at zara for a few years when i was a teenager and zara is always busy it doesn't matter what time of year it is they're always going to get their coin zara does what needs to be done it was a conversation while i was working the fits for me Every time Valentine's Day rolled around, 
This is the energy it gave. If I were to sum it up, I would say I might be single or in a situation ship, but I'm still sexy with it because a lot of the girls that were in the change rooms, ping pong back and forth conversations with their friends who are also single or in situation ships. I've been with this dude for six months. I give him everything and he's not ready. I want to scream back, but I can't because they know my business. He's not ready with you. Anytime they say I'm not ready or it's not the right time, just add with you at the end. And secondhand embarrassment hearing these conversations, but some of them were empowering because women are just like, I don't need that gratification. I don't need this one day. I'm comfortable with myself. I'm doing self care. Maybe I'm treating myself with retail therapy, but more often than not that day in the days leading up, it was a lot of anxiety, which always made me feel sad because that's not the point of the holiday. The holiday is not to make couples prove to the world on the gram that they're loved and they're valued. And it's not to make single people feel like they don't have it together and they're lonely. And I always got that vibe from the conversations I heard while people were shopping for clothes, either to boost their mood or boost their look. Last segment, I got a couple restaurant stories for you. As you guys know, I was a hostess. And in my last couple of years of working at a wine ferry, I worked a day shift and the swindlers be swindling, okay? I'm talking about my coworkers, not the customer. I know usually when I tell these story times, I make it customer facing and focused because usually they're the ones that are tripping. But Valentine's Day, next to Christmas Eve, the coworkers be swindling the situation. I overheard my coworkers say to my manager, not knowing that I can hear that well, oh, well, Alicia's single anyways, or she doesn't, ce ce she doesn't celebrate with her boyfriend, so why don't you make her work it? How about you ask me first? There's a reason why I'm working the day shift, or I'm working this shift, or I'm not working that shift. But people would be so consumed about getting what they want that they would just look at me as a obstacle. A lot of times, honestly, I'd already be working it because I could care less, more money in my pocket. But it was just funny to see how particularly girls more than guys would try to swindle their way to get it off. I had people try to pay me, people threaten me. I just said, is it that serious? I've seen chicks cry in the break room because they couldn't get the time off. And I just... You need real problems. Surprise, surprise, restaurants are similar to retail where men and women, I'm, hey, both sides can get it, feel oh too comfortable to tell me how they really feel, not just about the holiday, but their partner. I'd have people complaining when they call in and I'm thinking, Yo, you think this is a free therapy session? Why are you telling me how trifling your woman is or how obnoxious your husband is? then don't make the reservation, go to couples therapy. I don't know what to say, but it's just the, the I don't even wanna say the audacity of people to think it's okay to call me at a restaurant where I'm supposed to be booking last minute reservations and either offer to bring in a table, bring in balloons when we weren't allowed to, offer, offer to call reservations to confirm that they're coming on my behalf. And I'm like, no, everyone's confirmed. It's Valentine's Day. There's no one that's not coming unless they're broken up. It's just crazy how insane people get over this one day of the year. In the restaurant world, the hostesses are looked down upon as if we don't do work. And a lot of hostesses ain't it. Trust me, I've trained a lot of them and they don't care. They're just a pretty face at the front of the place. But when you actually do care, you have to have organizational skills on lock. So the hostesses that know, know. Doesn't matter if it's a high scale, mid range or low restaurant. Valentine's Day is go time. And you have to have your ducks in a row because if one table sitting longer than another, couples are like rich entitled people. They don't care about the circumstances. They just want what they want and they know what they want and they want it now. And they're not gonna stop until they get it. So making sure Valentine's Day goes off smoothly for your sake and the restaurant's sake is optimal and paramount that day. And I remember one restaurant I worked at, we got to the point where so many people were last minute booking. We had a long table that seats eight. The manager told me, if people are okay with it, tell them they can sit side by side on this long table. I said, I don't know who wants to go on Valentine's Day cafeteria style that desperately. Cause the vibe of that restaurant wasn't giving cafeteria, it was giving intimacy, but people actually booked it. For me, it was more the energy people gave and the conversations they shared about how unhappy they were with their partner, how they felt forced to get into the festivities or girls being like, I need to go here. I need to do this. I hope he brings flowers because I have to post on the gram. 
Like, do you hear what you're saying? It's not even about him expressing his love for you or her expressing your love for you. It's that you want to show people that don't care about you on social that this person that should care about you cares about you. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Did you hear that new future song? I said, this man is trifling. And that is my cue to end and wrap up this episode. Because you know me. I got on a lot of tangents. But all I'm saying is, you know what? I'll share one of my own since I only have one and a half Valentine's stories. So the one time I went out for Valentine's was really sweet. It didn't feel forced. But if I had my way, I'd go to another day. It feels like VR. Like you're sitting in a restaurant with all these other couples. It just feels so strategically made i don't know how to maybe i'm just weird and i see things this way but it just felt so structured so robotic it just there's nothing natural about it but it was sweet if that was given was small but so sentimental and it made me tear up i think i did actually cry over it because i was just like wow i never took in that he could be this kind of way and he put in the effort and i just thought oh and then that relationship fell apart and i was just like Maybe it's because I should have been demanding more. So anyway, that's the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe, and share your stories too. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.